welcome back. We're here in the atrium now at the uh, Automotive Hall of Fame, and uh, we're, we're lucky to have uh, our friends at General Motors have loaned us some amazing vehicles that uh, Mr. Wilburn oversaw the design of, uh, some d directly and some working with teams. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes walking around. You're going to be looking over our, our shoulder while Ed addresses the audience here. Uh, enjoy the design review. With that, Mr. Wilburn. Well, thank you, Brian, and thank you again, everyone. Uh, we're going to start with Aerotech, and the car was designed, its mission was to set several high-speed records for speed and endurance. Uh, the primary record was the closed course record that has to be on our oval track, and the largest oval track is actually a 7.7 mile oval track in Fort Stockton, Texas. So that's where it ran. Of course, when you're going around the curb, it slows the car down. So its records, some of them were printed on the car. Uh, the record had been held by a Porsche with a 917. Uh, Mercedes broke it with a high-speed research vehicle twice. And then we came along with this car and broke their record. There have been a couple of attempts to break it since then, which didn't happen. So this car still holds the record, and it's a record that it has held for decades. Uh, the chassis is an Indianapolis race car. It's another single-seater car, open wheel, no fenders, anything. So underneath this is an Indy car. Uh, with a very special engine, the original engine was a 1,000 horsepower two-liter motor with twin turbos. Uh, we designed the body, the body is my design, few sketches, and actually there's few sketches that have been for a project, because the very first sketch I did, one of my bosses just snatched it, took it and said, this is it. I said, well, I have some other idea, this is it. And um, this was kind of cool. And the whole, so the whole body was then developed in part in the design studio, in place, very sculptural, but most of the work was done in the wind tunnel. Right? So in the presentation, the wind tunnel became our design studio because every shape, every bit of the shape was influenced by reducing the drag and increasing the downforce. Generally, when you have downforce in an Indy car, the drag goes up. This is the only occasion where it has super downforce and it's very, very low in drag. And then you have to have intakes to cool the engine. Of course, when we set the record runs, the driver decided to take the risk in shutting off all of these, so it was getting no cold air to the engine, just to get it even lower in drag. Uh, as we develop the shape of the car, you know, the roll bar on the Indy car is about this high, and we had the roof height clearing the roll bar, and it just, it looked a bit awkward, plus it had more frontal area, so to reduce drag, and to make it look better, we lowered the hood, I mean, the, the roof, and the roll bar was sticking up, so then we created, became a natural place for the scoop. So the actual roll bar is inside of the scoop at that height, and we kept the roof down very low. Um, I was always, it always made me crazy that there's all this room around the rear wheel. You know, I, you know, so I would never design a car that had that much air around it. But at those kind of speeds, at 300 miles an hour, this and the, all the downforce from these huge tunnels that are underneath, the car sucked down on the road, the whole body drops three inches, and so it comes much closer to the tire. And at those speeds, the tire grows. So between the tire growing and the body dropping, we had to have this much space around the tire. It's that whole form and function thing. I mean, I mean function had to win out on this. You know, otherwise you blow a tire. You know, blow, blowing a tire at 300 miles an hour probably isn't a good idea. So, <laughs> so and can I ask a quick question? Yes. You, can you describe the moment when I was a Chuck or who approached you about doing this project? 
Uh, is there any consent? Okay, so when the, the GM design executive approaches you, yeah. and you know, Cutlass Supremes are wonderful, but this ain't no Cutlass Supreme. It's not your father's Cutlass Supreme well, either. Okay. What was that, what's the emotions okay. like as a designer when you got the Okay, and I, and I think all of you will appreciate this. I had been designing Cutlass Supremes for quite a few years, but I had this thing for streamliners, very streamlined cars. 917 was a big fan of it. So I always had small sketches of that kind of car on the corner of my desk because I was, in my free time, I was always drawing that kind of stuff. Len knew that. And he came to me and he said, Ed, you know, you, you're really good at these streamlining things. We got this project. It's got an Indy car chassis, 1,000 horsepower. AJ Ford's going to drive it. Could you give me your ideas? And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> First sketch, he was gone. He snatched it and was gone. And that, that was it. Uh, as we developed this car in the wind tunnel, uh, not only did we sculpt the tops, I wish you could see the bottom, because it is just as sculptural as the top. Those huge tunnels, bigger than any other race car has ever had. They've never allowed. Uh, tunnels that they have always had governing sanctioning bodies that did not so there are these two big tunnels that the way it's shaped really sucks the car to the ground it's it's cool it's it was a fun project not an easy project uh, the set records that have not been broken since then and, uh, I really learned a lot about working with a a wide variety of people to get something done. You know, people who otherwise didn't really like working together. <laughs> and and we were successful. I drove it. I did finally get a chance to drive this car. And, what was uh, that like? Well, yeah, you're just shaking. You know? <laughs> it's, it's like one of those things you always want to do, but then when you finally get to do it, you say, why did I? <laughs> I mean, because it's really, really tight. And come over and see inside. I mean, you can see it's an Indy car, and the seats are a little more padded than an Indy car. It's tight in there, and when you're driving an Indy car, you don't have these big fenders. All you have are the wheels out here, and with these fenders, it kind of blocks your vision from you sitting down that low. All you can see is straight forward, which is fine if you're on the track at 300 miles an hour. All you want to do is see straight in front of you. You're not looking around. But when I was driving it, I just couldn't see anything here. And you're trying to drive and maneuver, and it's it's not easy. It's it's very tight until you get all the way down into position, and then it feels good. And your helmet just barely makes it under the canopy. Were the mirrors always inside of the cockpit? Uh, yes. Uh, right now, the car is set up for the endurance runs with the Aurora V8. In that configuration, it ran for eight days and eight nights, 24 hours a day for eight days. And they had these mirrors in it for that. And the blinker light, because it's running at night, and, and the headlamps and tail lamps running at night, you didn't want to be able to see them, and we had three of them. Uh, one had the blue light, second one had the red, then the third one had a green flashing light. So what motor was in it when you got to drive it? Uh, this one, <laughs> uh, with the V8, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other questions for Ed? All right, why don't we move on? Uh, we'll stop at the Chevy SSR for a moment. Talk about that. Yeah, this is a project that I worked on with Brian Baker uh, in our advanced concept studio that we had. And uh, the idea, you know, I mean, the company was really searching for a new concept, and we explored many different directions. And one of them was to develop a new pickup truck based on a very historic it was the early 1950s. 48 to 53. Yeah, yeah, Chevy pickup. 
on a very modern chassis, but de developing this retro design. And one of the surprises was uh, to have a retractable hardtop on the design that stows right back here. And uh, it was a fun project. It was done in a very dramatic way. And, and most of this work was done digitally. It wasn't until the final production car that we built a clay model. Concept car was all done. Uh, mass surface. Yeah, it would mass sur surface. i never forget the reveal of the concept. The reveal, I was asked to do the reveal. I had the flu, and there was a flu medicine that would work for about 20, Alka-Seltzer Plus would work for 20 minutes. I'd feel good for 20 minutes. So backstage, Cobra Hall, the car's ready to go. And they gave me a signal, everything was timed. When I drank the medicine, and, and I, it'd take a few minutes for it to kick in, then the car would go out on stage with me in it. I had a driver and I'm the passenger. Get out on stage, I would get out. Um, I would give my presentation. They would retract the top and then the top would go back up and then we, we'd go off stage. That was the plan. So there we are backstage. Okay, cue the Alka-Seltzer Plus. I drank it, got rid of the glass. I'm in the car with the driver, and all of a sudden, the driver says, uh-oh, what do you mean, uh-oh? I mean, when my kids say, uh-oh, that's not a good thing. All the lights were just starting to blink like crazy. And I said, okay, we're gonna, and the curtain starts opening. And she said, what did I do? I said, look, drive out on stage, don't put the car, the truck, in park. Leave it in drive. Keep your foot on the brake. Do not retract the top. Okay. So we go out on stage. She does exactly as instructed. I get out of the car. I give my presentation. I get back in the car, and we drive off stage. They had an animation which showed the top going up and down. We get off stage. And she put the car in park the way she would have on stage. And on its own, the top retracted backstage. Retracted halfway, and then it just dropped. <laughs> never heard that. The world never saw that. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah. Let's fast forward a couple of years. Yeah, we were lucky. <laughs> that was a case of we were lucky, I guess. Is the Cadillac CL. This is one of my absolute favorite concepts. You may have seen it in the Entourage movie. Uh, we did a series of Cadillac concepts uh, to help build the brand and help people understand the design language. Uh, while meanwhile, we we're in the studio working on the production cars that would take a few years to come out, we did concept cars kind of you know, fill the void. And ma making a very strong statement on the grill of the car, on the lamps, very bold, very Cadillac. The vertical headlamps emphasize that maybe more than ever before. And I think it's very cool what the designers did with this shut line, turning it into a real feature. And the cut lines, you know, is usually just a cut line, but to turn it into a real key feature all the way through the car is very dramatic. The body shapes are dramatic. By the way, this particular design was done in our studio in California, in North Hollywood. A uh, very talented team, and they created this design. The interior is really something special. When you get a chance, take a look at the attention to detail throughout this interior. You know, from this wood, I mean, that, that is a solid block of wood used in, in the instrument panel. And, uh, it's not a veneer uh, or a paint job. And then the shape of the seats. Uh, as I recall, the seats are 
rather hard, rather stiff. But uh, the leather that's used, the wood that's used, the brush, the nickel finishes that are used throughout. Uh, I'm just so impressed with the level of detail that Frank Sacita runs that studio and his team just does a wonderful job in creating those details. Little zip pockets and things of that nature, the humidor down in the console. Uh, the folks still in the entourage just thought this is the perfect vehicle for them. They just you know, they didn't want to give it back. But it was it was another deal where they were looking for a car for the movie. I thought this would be the best one. And of course they needed it like yesterday and the car was was sitting in our museum and was not really ready for prime time and we got it done and got it out there too. Fun for, I just love the sculptural shapes, you know, and get a chance to really walk around and look at how much surface, you know, it has hard edges, but then it has all these flowing surfaces with you know, really a lot of shape throughout the, the vehicle. It's very well executed. And this is cars are quite a few years old and it I think it holds up quite well. The you know, clean design always lasts longer than something that is very active. A very active design may be great for the moment, but generally needs to be replaced sooner than me. Any questions for Mr. Wilburn about the CL? It's pretty breathtaking, isn't it? I haven't been in any place since March. So this is, this is an incredible <laughs> opportunity. And, and I feel like I'm losing my voice because I haven't talked to a lot of, a lot of people other than on Zoom. Uh, the most social event you've been at. Yes, for, uh, yes. Six months or so. Well, again, thank you to our friends at, at General Motors uh, for bringing these vehicles for us. Uh, the one we won't be able to show you today is uh, from Bumblebee 5. Uh, it's uh, the Camaro up front. But can we thank Mr. Welburn for the design walk around here? This Zoom video will be available on our website for you at the Automotive Hall of Fame .org, uh, and after we produce it a little bit and polish it up. But this has really been a special day, friends. Thank you for being here. Thank you on behalf of the Hall. Thank you. I'm just going to say thank you uh, for on behalf of these young people and all of the folks that are on, on Zoom with us today. I've really been looking forward to this. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're coming out party from uh, yeah. the six months of uh, being uh, in the house is such a special celebration. Yes. And we will have these vehicles here until February. Uh, the hall is open by invitation on specific weekends. Uh, that's subject to change depending on uh, the COVID situation that we're all dealing with. Friends, can we thank Mr. Welburn one last time? Thank you.